Hi everyone, I wanted to do this quick off-the-cuff video to just talk about the best show that's on TV right now, the one that I underestimated for so long, but that I'm so impressed with now, The Penguin. If you are a fan of comic book shows or uh, detective shows or crime shows or just good TV in general, then I would highly, highly recommend you watch this show. And you don't you don't have to be a Batman fan to enjoy it. I, it it's just so incredible incredible that uh, once again I was down on the show I was down on anything related to DC and then going into it and then now it is the best thing that I've seen on TV uh, this year in fact episode four that is what I'm here to talk about episode four was the best thing that I've seen all year uh, like across from movies across from TV shows out of all media that I've watched this year episode four of the penguin was the best of them all and one that I think needs to be talked about in order to get you to watch this show and see how great this TV is. And uh, to know there are lots of good things coming out there. I know YouTube prioritizes negative content, but there are lots of good things that are coming out. But uh, another reason why I want to do this video is that this episode is about a female character, a female villain who we thought was the villain, and she is done with such masterful complexity and dimension, and I am just so amazed by how her character is being developed and performed by the show, then we need to elevate just how good the just how good the writing with her character is. After a lot of talk about bad female characters in general and not being not being given very good writing, and I also think that this character Sophia Falcone is the she was already a good villain in the comics, but she has been just leveled up. I think this is the best depiction of a female Batman villain ever in in anything like uh, cartoons, movies, TV. This is the best. Now, why is it so good? Well, the Penguin up to this point has been about Oz Cobb, and he's a man who's been pushed down and made to look smaller his entire life, and he's trying to take something for himself. So after he kills the uh, head of the mob family, the Falcones, Alberto Falcone, in a fit of anger, he tries to work and play the families against each other by playing both sides to try to rise to power himself. And that's the entire point of the show. And at this point, one of the main villains, if not the the main villain of the show has been Sophia Falcone, the supposedly crazed uh, sister of Alberto who is out for revenge for his death. And, uh, you know, uh, Oz Cobb has to hide from her and play play her side to hide that he is the one who killed him. And the, at this point, we've liked Sophia Falcone as a villain because she is so well acted and she is so intimidating. That is the main point, that we get tidbits about who Sophia is. She was in Arkham Asylum for 10 years years. People call her the hangman. Supposedly, she's killed many, many people. When you go to the family events, the funeral that she's at, she eats with her hands, and everybody is just so very uncomfortable around her, and you feel like she could snap at any moment. But then in episode five, episode four, it's a very pivotable, pivotable, it's early, this is off the cuff, pivotal episode. Because we get to see the backstory of Sophia Falcone and the truth. And the reason why this is so well built up is because it takes everything that we thought we knew about this character and it, it contextualizes it so we have a completely different view of her. Um, so we take the character that we already were interested in before and are just so enhanced and on her side right now and uh, seeing that she might actually be the one character we can root for in this show. She might actually be the uh, the sympathetic character of the show and that the penguin is not. He is the hateable one. So um, we get her backstory once again about how once upon a time she wasn't involved in any of her family's business. She knew not to talk to reporters. She went and did the charity fronts for her father. That was about it. It's very built up that she is just a very normal shy person, has a little trouble public speaking, and that she's just living her life out normally. But everything changes when a reporter comes comes around and starts asking questions about her mother's suicide, supposedly, and the supposed suicides of various girls at the 44 Below Club, which is also referenced in The Batman. And at first, Sophia brushes it off, but she starts to have questions about this because she witnessed her mother's body when she died, and she had always been suspicious based on the marks on her and adding up with what the reporter is saying about the girls that had been killed, that her father was the one who killed her mother. So Sophia 
Lydia makes the fateful decision of trying to find out more information, but she backs off too soon because she's afraid of finding out the truth. But it's a bit too late, and this is very, very important, that because she and Oz Cobb, the penguin, he used to be her driver. They used to be friends. She used to defend him to everybody else. She was this perfectly nice person. And uh, because she slights him on the way home from the reporter, uh, Oz Cobb gets it into his head to report to her father that she was talking to a reporter. And he did not mean for it to get her in massive trouble. He was just trying to be an informant to her father so he could finally be seen. But that is the fateful moment because her father knows now that she has been talking to reporters and trying to find the truth out to um, uh, that he was the one who murdered all of these women. But he needs a fall guy for his crimes. And so what he does is he makes Sophia the fall guy for his crimes. He completely frames her for all of the murders. He sets it up so that she goes to an insane asylum. He has other members of the family uh, uh, sign, uh, sign paper saying that she is certifiably insane and she is supposed to spend time in Arkham Asylum for 30 days. And it's very important because this is a person from privilege. This is a person who's never gotten her hands dirty and she's all of a sudden thrown into this asylum. And this is a person who her biggest crime was finally trying to come to terms with who her father was. She was trying to do the right thing and she is just tossed into an asylum. And importantly, Alberto, her brother, is the only person who ever ever comes and visits her is the only person who ever tries to get her out but her father wants her to be put away and you see how she was driven to insanity she wasn't insane all along this woman was driven to insanity her father puts her in the asylum he puts her next to another crazy person who's there to spy on her so she can't trust anyone he uh, orchestrates it so she almost gets killed by an inmate and later is framed for that same inmate's murder she is put through electroshock therapy when she doesn't need it when she's begging not to have it and you just get this very grueling uh, sequence of events of how for the next month she is basically tortured in the asylum to go crazy and in the end after the 30 days was up her brother despite all of his efforts says that the the um, doctors at Arkham many of them are actually in her father's employ and have also made it so that she will never get out and she's there for 10 years until her father dies and her brother is finally able to get out but it is such a heartbreaking performance from Kristen Milioti where she is this woman who literally never did anything wrong is thrown into this asylum and you see how gradually she tries to keep her sanity but she is tortured to insanity and knowing that she's going to be there for 10 years time that she might not ever get out that breaks her and how this person who was literally just trying to uncover the truth at one point who had never done anything wrong who was born into this evil family was just destroyed and may and turned into a mad woman and now is still looked at now that she's out because Alberto finally got her out that uh, now in the present day she is still looked at as this mad woman by all the same family members who obeyed her father and tried to put her in there so it is it it, it literally changes your entire mind, your entire perception on the entire show, but not because um, they were hiding obvious information that we could have figured out from the beginning or because they retconned anything. No, it all makes sense from what we knew in the beginning. We were just missing the context that completely changes our minds on everything because now we understand that she's not just upset that her brother was murdered by the penguin. It is built up that Alberto might have been the only other person in her family that had any bit of humanity in him that cared about her at, at all. He was literally the only person he had in the world. And, uh, the penguin, Oz Cobb, killed him. So now no longer are we thinking that uh, Alberto was just this drunken, stupid mob boss who probably had it coming and he should have been killed in the first place. Now we see the penguin killed him out of selfishness because of his own insecurity. Now we see that no longer is Sophia the crazy person who the penguin has to run from. No, Sophia is the victim who has every reason to hate Oz Cobb, whether he intended or not, and he, none of his actions were intended to hurt her, 
But all of the, his actions to try to rise the ranks have affected her and destroyed her. He is the reason why her father found out about her. He is the reason why she went to Arkham Asylum. He is the reason why her brother, the only person who actually cared about her, is dead. And so as the episode goes on, you see Sophia, who is now a crazy person. Now she is trying to take back uh, and get revenge on her family. Not even get revenge, but just get rid of all these people in her family. All these horrible, self-interested people who destroyed her life and who just destroy other people. And now she is taking it for herself. That's why the episode is called Saint Anna, meaning a uh, hundred years or a new beginning. And you see the difference between her at the beginning being nervous to speak in front of anyone and now confidently coming and standing up to her family with a speech about how they've all done her wrong and they don't care and now trying to take over for herself and trying to fight back against it. And she, and I'm not going to spoil the ending, but um, she is taking things back and she, but it still shows that there is still some humanity left in her because we see that she lets her little cousin, her the child cousin that she knows she has, she spares her from her wrath against her family. So we still see through all this that Sophia still has some humanity left in her, even after everything that her father did to drive her to insanity. And once again, completely recontextualizes the entire show so that we are now kind of on Sophia's side more than anyone else. And it is just mind blowing. And the episode is very well shot and directed too. Like the perspective shots from Sophia when she's in Arkham Asylum, how blurry it gets, the lights and everything. It really just shows how everything becomes comes a blur and she can't and everything is like this weird dream or nightmare where she has a hard time distinguishing reality from her her fan her dark her worst fantasies coming true and so it's just very well shot and well executed and everything from uh, uh the cinematography just shows you how this very put together person just was literally driven into insanity and that is just such a tragedy and this is the kind of stories that I love Batman for so just such a fantastic fantastic episode. Uh, one of the best twists I've seen in a very long time, and I cannot recommend it enough. It is currently one of the highest rated episodes ever of any show on IMDb. I would give this episode a 10 out of 10. I have absolutely no notes for it. It is just that perfect. And that is why I just wanted to get out here and just ramble a bit about why the Penguin show is just so great and why you need to be watching it and why I can't wait to see what happens next because now I have a character to really root for in this show. Now I can't wait to find out because they say you're not going to like Penguin at all by the end of, of the series. I'm, I want to know what shakes out. Is Sophia going to survive this? Is she going to turn even darker? Um, is the Penguin going to survive this? It's all just very interesting and I'm just very happy to get some really compelling comic book TV out there again. So thank you all for watching. 100% go watch The Penguin. If you want to support my channel and all I'm doing on here, please check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Thank you all for watching and I will see you guys next time.